Hey everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to another video. Today we are going to have a first look at Samba. Samba is the standard Windows interoperability suite of programs for Unix and Linux systems. So in this video we are going to look on how we can connect to a Samba server. We are going to mount it in our Arch Linux installation and also do a fixed mount by adding the mount point to the fstab file. So let's get going and see how it's done. So here we are on a fresh install of Arch Linux. I just made the base install and installed the GNOME desktop environment just as an example here to show how we can connect to an external server with the Samba service. Now, of course, if you want to access an external server or an external drive with the Samba service, you need to have, of course, a username and a password configured on the server so that you can access it from Large Linux and also make sure that the Samba service on the server is actually up and running. Now, on the Arch Wiki, there are also some informations about opening firewall ports on the server and also on your Arch Linux machine. If you have a firewall also here on Arch Linux, you can go ahead and read the Arch Wiki part for the firewall so that you can open the right ports for that. In my case though, I don't have a firewall installed here, so I don't need to do this step. And generally speaking, if you did the base install of Arch Linux following the tutorial on the channel and one of the desktop environments, in this case specifically GNOME, you should be able to connect out of the box to a Samba server if the service is enabled on the server. But there are some things that we need to watch and some things that we need to configure. So let me show you what I mean. I have an external server here where Samba is actually already running with its own username and the password. So I want to access actually a shared volume on that server from this machine. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up the file manager and let me center the window here. And then I'm going to go to other locations and I'm going to type in here SMB colon slash slash. Now you need to know also here the server name. In my case, though, I know the IP address of my server because I checked this already before. And I know this is 192.168.178.33 slash and then I'll enter the shared volume name that I created on my server, which I know it's called Linux. And then I can just hit enter. And as you can see, it asks me now to connect as an anonymous user or as a registered user. Now, anonymous user on my server is actually not active, so I'm not gonna use this. I'll need to go with registered user. Now, the username is already here. That's actually just a coincidence because the username of this machine is the same one as the username I have on the server. But if you have another username on the server, you'll need to put that one in here. The domain is also fine because it's workgroup also on my server. And I'm going to put here the password that I have for this user on the server. And then I can choose whether to forget the password immediately, remember password until logout, or remember forever. I'm going to go here with the default and click Connect. And as you can see, I can access my documents fine here. I have two folders and I have a YouTube folder here. If I click on this, I can see the documents in there. So it's working fine here from the file manager. Now let me eject this and close this. We can do the same also from the command line. So let me open up the terminal and go full screen here. And we can type in SMB client and then slash slash again the server ip in my case is 192.168.178.33 slash linux again this is the shared volume i created on my server and then dash u and then the username that we want to use to enter the server so in my case it's my username which is again the same user i have also in this machine but on the server it could be something else and then i can hit enter and as you can see here, we have two messages. One, it says SMB client can't load the smb.com file. And then it's asking us for the password to enter our server. Now, if I enter my password here, you can see I'm logged in fine. But what this message is telling us is that the Samba service on this machine is not yet fully configured because I didn't install any Samba package. I don't have any configuration file neither. And I'm going to actually have to do that if I want to run actually also a Samba server on this machine. Now, I'll take care of this a little later, but I want to show you actually how you can navigate your Samba server also from the command line. So let me clean up the terminal and type in ls. And you can see this is the shared volume I accessed and I have also here my YouTube 
folder. So I can type it in here, CD and then YouTube and hit enter. And we are now in the YouTube folder. Type in LS again and we see the only file I have in there. Now, if you did this from the file manager, you can of course copy files from the server to your machine, but you can do the same also in the command line if you want to do that. To do this, we can type in, for example, get and then the file name, and then we specify where we want to save the file. So for example, I want to save it in my pictures folder. So I'm going to put here the absolute path, so slash home, slash hermano, slash pictures, and I'm going to call the file yt.png, and hit enter. And you can see it's getting the file, so it should be already copied. So I'll type in here exit and close the terminal. I'll open up my file manager again and go to the pictures folder. And I have here my yt.png file. So this is how you can access your Samba server from the command line or the file manager. Now let me close this window and open up the terminal again. Go full screen and I'm going to pull up here again the last command I used to enter my server. Now, again, you can see we have this message here, can't load the samba.conf file. And that's because, as I said before, the samba package and the samba configuration file is not present in this machine. This is useful if you want to create actually a samba server on the Arch Linux machine. Now, if you're interested in configuring a samba server on your local machine, let me know in the comments below and I will do a separate video about that because we need to install some packages and also create the configuration file and create eventually some shared volumes in your machine that you can access from other computers. But as I said, if you're interested in knowing how to do that, let me know in the comments below and I will create a separate video about that. So let me cancel from this out. And we have seen how we can access our Samba server from the command line and the file manager. But what if we want to have actually this server accessed every time we boot the machine? In other words, how do we actually mount the shared volume on the server on this machine so that it's accessible when we boot the machine? So I'm going to show you how you can mount first the shared volume in the machine and then afterwards how you can actually create a fixed mount point when you're booting the machine. So let me clean up the terminal. Now, the first step is to create a directory where you want to actually mount the shared volume of your server. So to do this, we need to use the mkdir command or the make directory command. So let's do this by typing in sudo mkdir and then slash mount. And then you can call your directory whatever you want to. So I'm going to call mine, for example, Samba Linux. And then just hit enter. I need to enter my sudo password and hit enter. And the directory is now created. Now, how do we actually mount the shared volume in the Samba Linux directory that we just created? Well, to do this, we can type in sudo mount dash t. The t switch means we need to specify the file type, which is in our case a CIFS because it's a Samba server. And then slash slash, we need to specify again the server IP. In my case, is 192.168.178.33 slash the shared volume name, which is again in my case Linux, and then we specify the mount point, which is slash mount slash Samba Linux dash O, because we need to put some options in here. And the first one is username equal. You'll put in here the username that you have on your server for this shared volume. So in my case, it's this username, the comma, and then password equal. We'll put in the password here that you created for this user on the server. So let me put this in. And this should actually do it for the mount. So let's see what happens when we hit enter. And you can see we have an error here. It says operation not supported. Refer to the mount CIFS manual page and the kernel log messages with the DMESG command. So this is very important. It means basically there is something that we are missing on this command that is not working with our server. So I need to debug this. And to do this, I'm going to use first the D message command here for the kernel log messages. So let me type in here DMESG and hit enter. And I see already what the problem is here. You can see here in red, we have here a message saying dialect not supported by server. Consider specifying version one or version two on mount for accessing older servers. This might be happening to you or might not. It really depends also on the server you're using. If this is happening, you need to basically specify one of the versions that you want to try to use to access the server. 
That means, let me clean up the terminal and pull up again the last two commands. Let's add a comma here and let's add one of the versions. So I'm going to try with the version 2.0. So I'm going to type in here verse equal 2.0 and hit enter. And you can see the error is now gone. That means if we close the terminal and we go to the file manager and let's go to other locations then computer. I'm going to go to list view here, go to the mount directory. We have our Samba Linux directory here that we created. And if I click in here, you will see I see my folders and I see also my photo in here. So the mount point is working correctly. Now, what we did in the terminal was creating a mount point and we mounted then the shared volume into this mount point. But this is anyway temporary because when I reboot the machine, it's going to be basically gone. So to make this mount permanent, we need to add it to the fstab file. You probably heard already the fstab file if you installed Arch Linux because it's a file where all our mount points are stored and the machine is reading this file for the mount points when it boots. So let's close this window and open up one more time the terminal. Go full screen here and let me type in sudo vim and the fstab file is under slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter. We need to enter our sudo password and here is our fstab file. So we need to create the mount point. So to do this, we need to go in insert mode, create a new line in here and type in, in here slash slash. Then first we need to type in the server IP. In my case is 192.168.178.33 slash Linux. Again, this is the name of the shared folder. A tab, then we need to specify the mount point, which is slash mount slash Samba Linux. Then we hit the tab again and we need to specify the file system type, which is CIFS. We hit tab one more time and now we need to specify the options. So one way to do this would be to put in here username equal. In my case, again, it's my username, comma, and then password equal your password for the user on the server. So I'm going to type it in here and then comma again. And then again, verse equal 2.0 to specify the version. And then a tab again, and we specify the file system checks. So it's going to be zero and zero. So pay attention to one thing here, and that is the options. So this way of entering these options is fine if you are the only user on the machine, because it's your machine and you don't care about this. But if you have actually your machine sharing with other users, you might need to be careful here because people are seeing actually the username and the password of your server. So if that's a concern to you, there is another way to do this. And that is actually, instead of typing in here username and the password, the version will stay anyway, we can actually create a separate file on our home folder with two parameters, user equal your username and password equal your password change the permissions on that file with chmod 600 and then enter in the fstab file here credential equal slash home slash your username slash the file that you just created because that way people are not seeing your username and the password and as i said if you have more than a user on your machine that might be vital information for you so you will put basically in here again credentials equal slash home slash your username slash the file that you created with your credentials comma and then the version name don't worry about all of this because i will leave a link in the video description below on how you can create that anyway if you created the line with one method or the other you can then save the file and exit vim and now let's see if the mount point works when we reboot the machine so let's type in here reboot and hit enter it's going to take a moment for the machine to boot up let's hit arch linux here and it's going to boot up here in a second in gnome again enter my password and we are back in the GNOME desktop. Now let's go ahead and see in the file manager if the mount point is still present. So let's go to other locations, computer, mount, Samba Linux. And there you go. We have our files there that I can access. So the mount point is working fine. So what you can do now, if you want to have always the mount point available here in the list, you can go back to the mount directory and drag this folder here into new bookmark. And you'll have your Samba server always available to you here on the list. So this is how you can access a Samba server or an external Samba drive from Arch Linux. 
Again, if you want to see how to actually create a Samba server on Arch Linux, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely do a video about that. So this is how you can install and mount your Samba servers on Arch Linux. If you guys are interested in knowing more about Samba, let me know in the comments below and I will do more tutorials about it. Let me also say a big thank you to the Patreons who are supporting me and I also hope you liked this video guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And again, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.